learning objectives after studying this learning module students will be able to define staffing establish its relationship with human resource management state the need and importance of staffing describe the steps in the staffing process state the meaning of recruitment and selection identify important sources of recruitment describe the steps in the selection process appreciate the need of training and development and explain various on the job and off the job methods of training introduction to staffing our assets walk out of the door each evening we have to make sure that they come back the next morning these remarkable words by the ceo of a global technology leader indicate the strength and powerfulness of human resource nowadays what distinguishes a successful company from unsuccessful one is the quality of manpower that is why the acquisition of manpower considered to be one of the most crucial functions of today's management staffing staffing has been described as the managerial function of filling and keeping filled the positions in the organization structure in simple terms it is the process of putting the right person into the right place in an organization it begins with the workforce planning and includes different other function like recruitment selection training development promotion compensation and performance appraisal of workforce hrm human resource management or hrm is the function within an organization that focuses on recruitment of management of and providing direction for the people who work in the organization relation staffing is considered to be a gap filling function in an organization by human resource management it is the responsibility of human resource manager to estimate the requirements of the employee and make sure that they are appointed at the right time responsibilities the responsibility and function of hrm is not the mere selection and appointment of employees it begins with the selection process and continues until the retirement of the employees during these periods they have to care of employees queries and problems their training compensation policies promotions etc importance of staffing nowadays human resource is considered to be the most valuable asset of an organization hence as a gap filling process it is recognized as the most important function performed by the human resource managers building healthy human relationships staffing function helps to build proper human relationships in the organization smooth human relations are the key to better communication and coordination of managerial efforts in an organization key to other managerial functions staffing function is very closely related to other managerial areas of the business the effectiveness of other managerial functions depends on the effectiveness of the staffing function human resources development skilled and experienced staff is the better asset of a business concern it inculcates the corporate culture into the staff which in turn ensures smooth functioning 
of all the managerial aspects of the business. Long-term effect. Staffing decisions have long-term effect on the efficiency of an organization. Qualified, efficient and well-motivated staff is an asset of the organization. Maximum utilization of resources. Proper care should be taken while doing staffing process. If right kinds of employees are not available, it will lead to wastage of materials, time, effort and energy, resulting in lower productivity and poor quality of products. Potential contribution. Staff selection should be based on the ability of the prospective employees to meet the future challenges that the organization need to address. Therefore, the potential contribution of the staff in their anticipated future roles should also be taken into account. In staff selection, staffing process, identifying manpower requirements. The very first step in staffing is to plan the manpower inventory required by an organization in order to match them with the job requirements and demands. Therefore, it involves forecasting and determining the future manpower needs of the concern. Recruitment Once the recruitments are notified, the concern invites and solicits applications according to the invitations made to the desirable candidates. Selection this is the screening step of staffing in which the solicited applications are screened out and suitable candidates are appointed as per the requirements. Orientation and placement. Once screening takes place, the appointed candidates are made familiar to the work units and work environment through the orientation programs. Placement takes place by putting right man on the right job. Training and development. Training is a part of incentives given to the workers in order to develop and grow them within the concern. Training is generally given according to the nature of activities and scope of expansion in it. Remuneration. It is a kind of compensation provided monetarily to the employees for their work performances. This is given according to the nature of job skilled or unskilled, physical or mental, etc. Performance evaluation. In order to keep a track or record of the behavior, attitudes, as well as opinions of the workers towards their jobs, a regular assessment is done by the superiors. Promotions and transfer. Promotion is said to be a non-monetary incentive in which the worker is shifted to a higher job demanding bigger responsibilities. Recruitment Recruitment refers to the process of finding possible candidates for a job or a function. It may be defined as the process of searching for prospective employees and stimulating them to apply for jobs in the organization. Sources of recruitment. The sources of recruitment may be broadly classified into two categories. They are internal sources and external sources. If an employee is selected within the organization, it is internal sources. And if the selection is from outside the organization, it is external source. Internal sources of recruitment. Promotion. Business enterprises generally follow the practice of filling higher jobs by promoting employees from lower jobs. Promotion leads to shifting an employee to a higher position, carrying higher responsibilities, facilities, status and pay. Transfers. It involves shifting of an employee from one job to another 
one department to another or from one shift to another without a substantive change in the responsibilities and status of the employee. Employee referrals. Present employees are well aware of the qualifications, attitudes, experience and emotions of their friends and relatives. They are also aware of the job requirements and organizational culture of their company. As such, they can make preliminary judgment regarding the match between the job and their friends and relatives. Merits of internal sources Internal sources of recruitment has many merits like it serves a source of motivation to the workers, reduces the complexity of selection process and saves time and money. Demerits of internal sources Internal sources of recruitment is criticized from several grounds. It stops the firms to get fresh talent. Frequent transfers may hamper the organizational performance and also if the promotion happens on time bound, it will affect the quality of employees also. External sources of recruitment External sources of recruitment are those sources which are outside the organization. We can discuss the important among them one by one. Direct recruitment. Under the direct recruitment, a notice is placed on the notice board of the enterprise specifying the details of the jobs available. Job seekers assemble outside the premises of the organization on the specified date and selection is done on the spot. Casual callers. Many reputed business organizations keep a database of unsolicited applicants in their offices. Such job seekers can be a valuable source of manpower. A list of such job seekers can be prepared and can be screened to fill the vacancies as they arise. Advertisement Advertisement in newspaper or trade and professional journal is generally used when a wider choice is required. Most of the senior positions of industry as well as commerce are filled by this method. Employment exchange Employment exchanges run by the government are regarded as a good source of recruitment for unskilled, unskilled operative jobs. In some cases, compulsory notification of vacancies to employment exchange is required by law. Placement agencies. These agencies compile biodata of a large number of candidates and recommend suitable names to their clients. Such agencies charge fee for their services and they are useful where extensive screening is required. Campus recruitment. Colleges and institutes of management and technology have become a popular source of recruitment for technical, professional and managerial jobs. Many big organizations maintain a close license with the universities, vocational schools and management institutes to recruit qualified personnel for various jobs. Selection Selection is the process of identifying and choosing the best person out of a number of prospective candidates for a job. To achieve this, the candidates are required to take a series of employment tests and interviews. Preliminary screening Preliminary screening is done on the basis of the information supplied in the application forms. It helps the HR department to reject unqualified applications. Selection tests A selection test is conducted to evaluate the conceptual knowledge 
of the candidate. These may range from aptitudes such as manual dexterity to intelligence to personality. Employment interview. Interview is a formal, in-depth conversation conducted to evaluate the applicant's suitability for the job. During interview, the interviewer collects as much information possible from the candidate. Reference and background checks. Usually, employers collect names, addresses and telephone numbers of references for the purpose of verifying information and gaining additional information on an applicant. Selection decision. The final decision has to be made from among the candidates who pass the tests, interviews, reference checks, the views of the concerned manager will be generally considered in the final selection. Medical examination. After the selection decision and before the job offer is made, the candidate is required to undergo a medical fitness test. The job offer is given to the candidate being declared fit after the medical examination. Job offer. Job offer is made through a letter of appointment or confirm his acceptance. Such a letter generally contains a date by which the appointee must report on duty. Contract of employment. Employment contract is made in between the employer and the employee. This form contains certain vital details about the candidate, terms and conditions of the job, salary and perks, information and the like. Training and Development Training is the process of helping employees to improve their knowledge and skill so as to be able to perform their tasks more efficiently. The term development refers to the process of not only building up the skill and abilities but also the overall competence of employees to undertake more difficult and challenging tasks. Importance of training and development The employee who receives the necessary training is more able to perform in their job. The various points of importance of training are discussed below. Improved employee satisfaction and morale. The investments in training that a company makes shows employees that they are valued. The training creates a supportive workplace. Employees may gain access to training they wouldn't have otherwise known about or sought out themselves. Addressing weaknesses. Most employees will have some weaknesses in their workplace skills. A training program allows you to strengthen those skills that each employee needs to improve. Consistency. A robust training and development program ensures that employees have a consistent experience and background knowledge. The consistency is particularly relevant for the company's basic policies and procedures. Increased productivity and adherence to quality standards. Productivity usually increases when a company implements training courses. Increased efficiency in processes will ensure project success which in turn will improve the company turnover and potential market share. Increased innovation in new strategies and products. Ongoing training and upskilling of the workforce can encourage creativity. New ideas can be formed as a direct result of training and development. Reduced employee turnover. Staff are more likely to feel valued if they are invested in and therefore less likely to change employers. Training and development is seen as an additional company benefit. Recruitment costs therefore go down due to staff retention. 
Methods of Training Training methods are broadly classified into on-the-job training and off-the-job training. On-the-job training On-the-job methods refer to the methods that are applied to the workplace while the employee is actually working. Apprenticeship programs Apprenticeship programs put the trainee under the guidance of a master worker. These apprentices are trainees who spend a prescribed amount of time working with an experienced guide or trainer. Coaching. In this method, the superior guides and instructs the trainee as a coach. The coach sets mutually agreed upon goals, suggests how to achieve these goals, periodically reviews the trainee's progress and suggests changes required in behavior and performance. Internships This training method is followed by the educational institutions and corporate. Here, selected candidates carry on regular studies for the prescribed period. Of the job training this is any form of training which takes place away from the immediate workplace. Off-the-job training includes more general skills and knowledge useful for work as well as job-specific training. Classroom lectures. This method is used to conveying specific information, rules, procedures or methods. Films. They can provide information and explicitly demonstrate skills that are not easily represented by the other techniques. Used in conjunction with conference discussions, it is a very effective method in certain cases. Vestibule training Here, actual work environments are created in a classroom and employees use the same materials files and equipment. This is usually done when employees are required to handle sophisticated machinery and equipment. Case study. Case studies are the actual experiences of organizations. Trainees study the cases to determine problems, analyze causes, develop alternative solutions select what they believe to be the best solution and implement it. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned in this module. Staffing is a function where all the employees need to perform. It is a separate and specialized function and there are many aspects of human relations to be considered. Human Resource Management or HRM has rolled over the traditional concept of labor welfare and personal management. HRM in its present form has evolved from a number of significant interrelated developments which date back to the era of industrial revolution. Employment exchanges run under the supervision of the government and it performs superb role of recruitment for unskilled and skilled people. Selection is a method of scrutinizing and hiring the best person to meet the exact need of job profile. The staffing function helps businesses in order to fulfillment the need of manpower within an organization on time. The employee who receives the necessary training is more able to perform in their job. On 